One of the reasons that I wanted Jim Jenks here and why I wanted Major League Baseball here was because how many of you have the Major League Baseball app? Anybody a baseball fan? On Okay, and so from your experience, tell me what you love about the Major League Baseball app. In game. And the fact that you don't just, you don't have one game, you have just about any game you want. You're talking at the ballpark? Yeah, okay. Scores. Scores and summaries. Anybody else who else has the, has the app? You know, one of the things that I loved about uh, M MLB, and I had the MLB uh, app, gosh, three or four years ago. I mean, it, it seemed like it was early on in the game, and the fact that it was streaming, and it was, it was all this content. And so when I approached um, Din Mann uh, from, from Major League Baseball, I said, you know, I really think that in terms of the power and the presence that you guys have established in this space, that we really, really need to have you at this Mobile First Symposium to talk not just about content creation, about bandwidth and about the sheer power of a brand that, that people, frankly, to buy the app, you don't mind my saying, it's not, it's not a $1.99 or a 99 cent app. This is an investment that you make because you love the game, you love the sport, you love the brand, you love the players, you love everything about it. And so let's kind of get into that just a little bit. And, and you sent me a couple of things that you wanted to talk about. And you talked about portable and powerful, and I'm getting to the top of my notes here as quickly as I can, and personal. And so let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I, you know, we love alliteration. You know, the marketing people love <laughs> alliteration. Little, so. Uh, as I was uh, talking about this with the folks in the office, you know, it came out Pow portable, powerful, and then most importantly, personal, as, as we talk about uh, mobile first. Um, you know, in, in everybody's uh, presentations, you know, we talked about at what point did mobile take over, you know, from your wired. We go back to July 2011. And as we stand today, we are 60% mobile versus 40% wired as we enter the 2014 season. So um, I don't know if somebody wants to fire up the website right now. Apparently, we are streaming the Boston Red Sox visit to the White House right now. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, and I don't know if you can do that, Amanda, while we're talking. If, uh, you know, and then yesterday with the, with the beginning of instant replay or uh, the replay, uh, not the beginning of it, but the, the new replay system, uh, part of what we did was in keeping fans aware and full disclosure about what we're doing in the replay system, every replay that happened yesterday, and there were four, all of the results went to the video board in the stadium, and if you were a push subscriber, you got the plays on your phone yesterday. So you could see the defining replay that you know, the umpires made their call on. So we're about streaming video. We're about getting it to your phones. We're about getting it to you personally. And so one of, the, one of the things that, you know, because we were chatting informally, we met for the very first time yesterday, but I was, I was talking to him, it's not just about the game now, and, and let's talk about the different uh, brands within the brand, if we can, between at bat and MLB TV, and at the ballpark, and beat the streak, and games, did it go, did it go down? No, we just, just missed it. Just, it, it, oh, was okay. on, it was it, on this it screen, was just and the players were shaking hands with Obama, and they just went away from right, the broadcast. Right, right, right. So. That's okay, we'll leave it up and we'll see. So we'll, if we'll, Jim was a little bit shorter in his presentation, <laughs> we could have gotten a little more of it. I'm a broadcaster, right? Long, long window. No, no, the other Jim. So, so, so there you go, there you go. So, so let's talk about these different apps and the strategy, because you know, it's not just, I think sometimes we think about the brand and we might think, oh, that's a product. And, and what you're seeing is you're seeing multiple products emerge within the product. Right. Um, you know, at bat, uh, when, you, when you go to it and you get it, uh, you can get it in a very basic format and then you can do all of the add-ons. So with at bat, you know, we, we really focus on the live game experience uh, through game day. And as you talk about second screen, game day works as a really good second screen when you're watching a, you may be watching your favorite team on television, the game day portion of the at-bat app is the pitch by pitch, the live box score, 
the pitch FX telling you what speed the pitch was, what kind of pitch it was. Um, you have that information. You can also uh, add on the MLB.TV subscription, uh, which allows you every game out of market. So if you are, again, if you're a, a fan of the Phillies like I am, and you're worried about what the Atlanta Braves are doing on your second screen, you put up the Braves game and you're watching. One of the greatest experiences of my fan life and, uh, and professional life was a couple years ago, the last night of the season, if you recall, there was a 10 minute stretch uh, where so many of the playoff scenarios were decided uh, there was, a, I was watching the Dodgers game. There was a grand slam uh, in the ninth inning where the Diamondbacks came back and won the game. It meant that the Dodgers weren't going to be home for the playoffs. <laughs> there was the Red Sox Orioles game where the Red Sox, or yeah, where the Red Sox were knocked out of the playoffs. And then there was the Tampa Bay game, and I can't remember who they were playing, but Evan Longoria hit a home run to put them into the playoffs. And all those games, I was watching live because I am, you know, part of what I do is I have a phone, I have a mini tablet, I have a tablet, and I have televisions, smart TVs that I can probably have four or five games up if, I, if I'm really that nuts. But right. this was a case where news warranted it. We were trying to find out where we were going to be going for playoffs, and so we just had it all going, and it was... And so I'm going to go off script a little bit, I, I, because I'm trying to imagine uh, infrastructure-wise, and you, you, you tell me where we're, where we're still in within the, the chalk lines here. Right. But it, from an infrastructure standpoint, from a staffing standpoint, but just the sheer bandwidth to carry 31 live streams a night and to still have room left over in the tank, so to speak, means, and you've had that built for a long time, you're vertically constructed to be able to handle, you're your own OVP, you handle everything. Kind of explain what happened to bring that about. What happened to bring it about? Um, well, in the very beginning, <laughs> as you know, um, some of you know, baseball was really the last of the major professional sports in the internet game. game. Right. Uh, what they did, what we did, was we kept it all in-house. We had to, you know, Commissioner Seelig um, and you know, our CEO, Bob Bowman, had to convince the owners that rather than having 30 independent countries, we were gonna have one country and it was gonna, you know, you were gonna we work with us. So the teams had to be convinced, or, or maybe not, you know, Maybe the commissioner just says, okay, this is how we're doing it. So we took control of it that way, and we started to build the infrastructure right away. So um, the site, uh, MLB.com, was uh, January 2001, I believe, um, 2000. Uh, by 2002, we were streaming live baseball games. Now, it was on your uh, desktop wired device. And you know, so we built the infrastructure to do that a little bit at a time. And there's a running joke you know, in the office is every opening day, the office looks dramatically different. Physically, the footprint changes that much. This year, we added the replay facility called The Rock, the Replay Operations Center, 800 and some odd square feet that pretty much wiped out the multimedia floor where my producers and editors were doing their work. Last year, we added the TOC, which is our technology operations center, which is probably as big as this room, with hundreds and hundreds of monitors where we're bringing in feeds from all over, from, from 30 ballparks, um, from some of our partners you know, we work with, uh, with ESPN and ESPN3. They do 10,000 events a year that we bring in and help them stream to their, to their customers. So building that infrastructure, um, Joe and Zerillo, our uh, uh, multimedia guru, uh, has been, you know, knocking these things out year in and year out. 
And, you know, with that comes, you know, more bodies, more equipment, more, you know, but there is a vision there every year as to where we're going to go. Well, and to build on that sort of baseball theme metaphor, it's not if you build it, they will come because it's not about, it's not about a destination, right? Right. It's, this is a journey, uh, particularly on the infrastructure front that, that really knows no bounds. You're more like on the Starship Enterprise going to the great yeah. beyond and you don't know where you're going. Really. Yeah, it, it's not so much if they build it, they will come. They're already there. Right. They're waiting for us. Yeah. They're waiting for the technology. What we've done is we've gotten there, I think, a little bit quicker, probably than a lot of the traditional, well, definitely than a lot of the traditional media. And I am a former newspaper person and a you know a television person. So um, I know the frustrations in getting there. And again, the total control aspect, the reinvestment every year in our technology um, not answering to anyone really but the fans and ourselves allow us that flexibility and that strength to go out and create. Is it it's safe to say that you feel like you reinvented the brand of baseball in some respect when you went to mobile to this sort of streaming sort of always on more content. I'm never going to be presumptuous to say I reinvented anything. Not you. Um, Not you personally. <laughs> no, no, no. And I mean us. Yeah. I, you know, no. Baseball, I don't think, needs a reinvention. It just needed, you know, fans wanted the games in many different ways. Right. And that's, that's who we answer to. We answer to the fans. Now, we have some very, you know, very creative, very young technological minds that, that you know, are constantly coming up with, with new ideas to service. I mean, you bring up at the ballpark. I mean, to sit in your seat and on your phone and order your food and have it delivered to you. You know, I, I believe last week or two weeks ago, we just did, did a deal with uh, MapQuest with at the ballpark. So now you're going to know traffic conditions coming into the game if you're, you know, if you're on your at the ballpark app. Um, you know, obviously weather uh, is another one. If you're going to, you know, be sitting there for three hours, what's the temperature going to do? So all those things are integrated into at the ballpark. So we're constantly thinking the fans inside the fans head to make the game a better experience for them. And then I, in, a, in a second, I want to open this up. Um, in terms of access, it seems to me that particularly with a sports product, um, one of the things that fans really seek is, is access, uh, a VIP treatment that I think you're talking about there as well. Um, is that the conversation that's going on in the background at some point, if it's not directly, indirectly, about giving fans more access to yeah, not from just a, from a yes yeah, across players. the board. I mean, yep. from a from a content perspective, from the the written word, um, from the original programming perspective. I mean, we we are more than just the technology. We are a content company as well. And a lot of what uh, the, the new content that we are working on is access, you know, getting behind the scenes. Um, and yeah, I mean, we talk about access all the time. We talk about, you know, the credential. What do we have that we can give them that gets them that feeling, that makes them want to come back outside of the live game experience. Well, and that's the other thing you said, and then I, I do want to open it up. You said, we're not just a content company, we're a technology company, which I thought was, was very interesting in terms of- Yeah, I mean, depending on who you talk to in our <laughs> office, it goes, which one's first? We're a technology company and, you know, we're a, we're a content company. Or, you know, I'm a content person, so we're a content company and I, I have to, you know, deal with the, not deal with it, but, you know, uh, encourage the technology to make sure that we're all working together. And I think, you know, we heard today, and I've definitely suffered through this, suffered being the right verb, um, with sponsorship over here and technology over here and the newsroom over here. We don't have that. I mean, there is a running joke in our meetings that we blow up all our silos. We can't be siloed. I don't know how many times I've been accused of being siloed, you know. I'm a little bit older than the other people in the room, you know, and I am a content person. Now, we are baseball people. Um, you know, my focus is content, but 
we do our best to blow up the silos. I speak to sponsorship almost every day on content. Now, the pure journalists in the room are going, no, no, no. But you know, there is a way. There is a way, and we're, we're working on it. And that's one of the things I'm more proud of. You know, again, all the technology and everything and, and what we do for the game, but we have created a dynamic within the multimedia side, which is where I pretty much reside. We're a money-making business just in the multimedia side right? because of how we have positioned ourselves with sponsors and how we can deliver content multimedia in many different forms for them. Questions? Questions? I think it's interesting, and, and I would be interested in your insights as to why you might think that both you and Din, two of the top leaders of your organization, came from newspapers. It came from a reporting background. And is, is there something more to that? Yeah, we got tired of hearing no. Um, you ever feel like the dog? No, no. <laughs> You can't do it. And, and, and Din and I, you know, we're, we're both type A's, I guess, in the, in the fact that um, we don't take no for an answer. Um, and I mean, Din, very creative, um, he's an idea guy. You know, he, he, if he doesn't kill himself driving, texting, you know, ideas. <laughs> um, you know, we both have very long commutes, and I think that has a lot to do with it too. We're, we're constantly, you know, we're constantly thinking. Um, no, it, it was a drive. I mean, for, for me personally, it was Paul Allen and Starwave. Uh, I was working in the, in the newspaper industry, and I had an interview, and I went to Seattle, and I went and saw, again, young, um, non-sports people, but brilliant engineering technology minds that loves sports and said, could we ever do this? Could we ever do that? And I walked out of that interview and I just said, I, I don't know how much money I'm not gonna make by coming here, because I'll have to take a pay cut, but I'm coming here. And I did it and it was the best move I ever made because the energy, the passion, and if we could all step back and see that in what we're doing, and, and you know, right now it's about mobile and social networking and all those things. It all grabs you, you know, us individually as human beings. I mean, you're playing in the sandbox, whether you're, you know, you're, you're working at the office, but what are you doing when you're outside? You're coordinating your kids' stuff. You're doing everything via mobile. What do you think, having been in both arenas, that news organizations could learn. You know, I think we kind of bemoan the fact that it seems so easy for ESPN or MLB, the sports, you know, that, that has that fan base, or it seems so easy for weather because we all want to know what the weather is. What do you think news organizations can learn from an organization such as yours that they could take home? Again, okay, it's, the, it's, it's the cliche, blow up the silo. Sit in the same room with the people. You're all there to serve your consumer, and I know some of you have to serve your bottom line and your you know, Wall Street entities, and that makes it, that makes it harder. Um, but when was the last time a content person had a conversation with a marketing person? Probably not as long as it's been since that contact per content person has had a conversation with a sponsorship person. You, you hear the think outside the box. I, you know, I hate the cliches, but when you sit in the room with these people, you all got jobs, right? Because you're pretty smart and good at what you do. Well, somewhere along the line, we hit a, a roadblock. Technology went a whole lot quicker than we thought. Uh, you know, again, from the newspaper and, and legacy media, you just got to open, you got to open the doors and drop the, drop the gloves, so to speak, <laughs> you know? Hi, um, I have a question. Uh, Major League Baseball has gotten a lot of buzz around the iBeacon deployments that you're going to be doing uh, this coming season. Can you talk a little bit about what you're trying to do with that and maybe in terms of the interaction design you have for the fan experience? You've got the wrong person for that. I'm not a technology, you know, I, I, I yeah, I am not the... Uh, you know, I, I can get an answer for you, and I will be glad to. 
Uh, but, uh, yeah. yes, sir. There's a story of realizing that innovation about this. Um, if you go to that website, how will I beacons change the MLB stadium experience? Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your third uh, third screen strategy in the sense that there's obviously two different things, the in the park people, which is 20-ish thousand people, that you're trying to deepen that mm -hmm. engagement there, uh, then the masses, which are millions, if not more, right? The, the displaced sure. Giants fan that has to live in New York or so on and so forth. And like, and then even what types of content you provide, right? Because the relative scenario to me is a newscast versus third screen or second screen, and then a game which is, you know, going to stay the way it is and replay. Right. Well, oh obviously God. the game is, is, is what we're all reacting to. Um, you know, from a second screen second, and a third screen experience, um, you know, we are moving more and more into the, the fun, technological, statistical side. Like I said, in the game day, you can see, you know, how the pitch is coming in, the trajectory, you can see the pitch speed, you can see the pitch. Well, now you're going to see how quickly a center fielder moves to you know, one side as opposed to another side. Has Derek Jeter truly lost the step because we are putting you know, that, we're putting live technology to that now. Um, and that will be, you know, something that's coming out. You know, I hope I'm not getting in trouble by saying that. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but Camera. it's 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 those kind of things that take the game to even a more granular, more interesting, fun level. And then, you know. Obviously, we're involved, like everyone else, with, with social media. And we have, uh, I mean, if you come into our office, and I invite you all to come to our office, it is, it is sort of a technological museum in, in its own. You know, when you first walk in, you come out the elevator, we have our social lab right there. And you know, all the monitors and all the people, and you see the faces of the people you know, in the monitors doing, you know, they, they work with all 30 teams. They work with Facebook. They work with Instagram. They work with Twitter. They work with Pinterest. They work with all of them. The minute something rears its head, we're there. And that adds to the multiple screen experience, too, during the game. You know, the, the, the tweeting stuff, tweeting video out, tweeting, you know, comments, finding the player tweets. We have everybody, you know, they go through, uh, we go through the auth authentication process with them. So we're constantly, you know, pushing that out. So, yeah, it's an all engulfing experience. One more real quick, Mike. Do you get access to set top data so that you know what percentage of people are who are using your app are engaged with the live broadcast on television and how much is yeah I, I don't personally see that what I see the ones that I see are stories you know what stories are being hit how long multimedia I know what multimedia is is king of the day um, somebody said yesterday uh, and I, I, I found this very interesting because it's something we do because we move so fast we have to find the things every year that don't move, and we have to kind of you know, make that adjustment. We do that. We do that. And uh, you know, uh, from my perspective, since, since 08, which was, was, was my first full season, and what we're doing today uh, you know, for the 14th season, there's some commonalities, but it's dramatically different. And you know, where we were doing more long form content last, last time, we're doing less and less of that. However, we are bringing much more original content, game shows um, called, you know, game show called Bucks on the Pond, um, <laughs> Express Written Consent, which is a, is a uh, program where we allow, or not allow, we invite, um, celebrities from other, you know, movie stars, TV stars to come sit in a booth if they want to call an inning, if they want to just talk about baseball experiences, you know, we do that and we're creating that kind of content. Again, sponsorship, that's what sponsors said they wanted. So we reach out and we get it done. So constant change. Jim Jenks, Major League Baseball. Thank, Thank you for coming in. <laughs>